Hey, and welcome back, all my fellow pop culture and comic book aficionado friends. And uh, welcome to another episode of I Love Charlton Comics. Now, no, it's not DC. It's not Marvel. It's not Image. It's not Warren. It's not Dark Horse. It's not Harvey. It's not Archie or anything else. It is Charlton Comics, the three-legged dog of the comic industry. And I don't know why, but I just love this stuff. Uh... A little bit of everything, a whole lot of uh, horror. Were you horror guys? Uh, there's some freebies I got from this guy when I ordered. This got like a big lot, uh, and I'm just really surprised because a lot of these are in really high grade, and uh, it's hard to find Charlton Comics anywhere in any kind of higher grade. And they just they were a great price. Uh, so we'll just start off. Okay, we have. Uh, Attack number 27. Some war comics. That's the only war comic. And again, for my good friends, Tom and Chris, Hippies Collectibles and Monster Maniac, these next few are for you. And if by some chance it seems to some of you that I get some kind of sadistic glee out of showing romance comics for these guys. Well, I mean, you're absolutely right. But it's out of love. So, <laughs> we have from Charlton, Love and Romance, number 15. I'm sure that's like part two of a multi park epic. Looks that way anyway. I mean, just, you know, you got the guy with the wearing the lay and the, the funky disco suit and you got the plane in the air, so it's got to be like a multi part story, right? Okay, Love and Romance, 15. All New Teenage Love, number 96. And I don't know what to say about this, except i got nothing to say about this. Uh, but I do have something to say about this. This is, for a couple of reasons, a pretty good uh, little comic to have. This is I Love You, number 95. And you get a free pinup poster of David Cassidy. But the cool thing about this comic, in all seriousness, is that this is some uh, early work by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, who uh, I'm a big fan of his work. He did some great Superman stuff in the late '70s, uh, and you know, for a lot of other companies too. Just uh, had a great style. But this is some of Garcia Lopez's early work. Uh, he did the cover, and he did uh, the last story in the back. You can see the uh, signature right here. And you can kind of tell it doesn't look like your normal Charlton stuff. But anyway, there you go. Tom and Chris, that's for you guys. Okay, on to the horror and the sci-fi. Uh, just, you gotta love this stuff. You know, it's all anthology. Uh, and of course you got Ditko and Boyette and San Ho Kim and uh, Wayne Howard, uh, Pete Morrissey, uh, Pete Morrissey, sorry. I've been mispronouncing that for a long time and I found out by watching a YouTube video of a Charlton panel that the guy's name was Pete Morrissey. And anybody that read Charlton comics, you kind of see, you knew his art, but you kind of see his signature looked like Pam because it was like P-A-M in capital letters, except the M was like, looked like three ones or three I's or something. But that was because the guy uh, was actually a cop, and he just moonlighted drawing comics, so he really kind of had to hide his name. Uh, maybe some useful trivia for somebody who wants to look that up. But, you know, like I say, you, you got Ditko and Paro and uh, Boyette and Sano Kim and uh, Morrissey and Wayne Howard and all these guys. Uh, you know, it's like DC and Marvel, you know, they use the same guys on their horror stuff. Here's one got a Ditko cover. Most of the ones that had a Ditko cover usually had a Ditko story. So uh, for you Ditko fans, definitely worth searching out. Uh, Ghostly Haunts number 27. The Ditko cover. More or less a reader copy. But take it. Ghost Manor 16. High grade Steve Ditko. Uh, 
There were 69 more Ditko. Uh, something else to note, and I, hold on, I'll try to find the book if I can find it. Okay, something to note on Ghost Manor. Uh, I think there was actually two different series of that. And like the first series might have lasted 18 or 20 issues, and then uh, the last one probably lasted, uh, I don't know, maybe 70 to 100. I'm not sure. I should know, right? I'm a Charlton geek. Uh, but anyway, this original, number uh, 15, really nice high grade, wonderful looking Ditko cover. Ghost Manor 15. And here you have. Ghost Matter 69, which I think was the second series. You can see a little similarity there. And that's because, uh, you know, like Marvel did a lot in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, they would reprint uh, some of their stuff and use like the same cover or like a panel from the story. So I'm pretty sure this has uh, got a reprint of this story inside. <laughs> But still pretty cool, kind of a little bit different, uh, looks like, as far as the coloring and all that. Yeah. So maybe they were trying to fool people that didn't know their colors, I don't know. But Ghost Manor 15 and 69. Number 26, the Pat Boyette painted cover. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, some gold key covers, I think. Ghostly Tales 83 or Steve Ditko. Haunted number 34 or Baron Werewolf's Haunted Library as it was uh, later known. If you look inside in the indicia it still says Haunted so just something they put on the cover. Mini Ghosts of Dr. Graves 24 more high grade Ditko. More Ghosts of Dr. Gray's number 40. And I'm pretty sure that's another Ditko. Nice purple cover. Okay. Ghosts of Dr. Gray's number 36. The Sign Ho Kim cover. Guess me, this guy was really underrated. Number 18, same title. More Ditko. And we got some Silver Age sci fi going on. At least one, anyway. Now we got two or three here. Okay. Uh, we've got, uh, not sure what the number is. But anyway, I know I didn't have it. It's Gorgo. Awesome cover. Don't know the number. Uh, same with these two, not sure the number. With some uh, cool old sci-fi from the 60s. This one's uh, pretty much a reader. Space War. And more Space War. Nope, no number. <laughs> and here we have uh, Space Adventures. I'd never... Uh, I'd seen this on some websites like Mile High and uh, my comic shop and uh, and all kind of, but I, I'd never really uh, seen one that was actually for sale until recently. Uh, Space Adventures number four, and just check out that beautiful Jim Aparo cover. Jim Aparo on Sci-Fi. Very cool. Got the uh, little psychedelic 
cover blurb there. So nice little comic. Ghost Manor number 60. A lot of these are Ditko. I'm sure you guys know about this. I'm not going to yell Ditko every time a cover comes up. Uh, Ghost Manor 46. I think one of the reasons uh, him and a lot of other guys uh, worked for Charlton, I mean, they were cheap. But uh, from what I've read, uh, they pretty much let them do what they wanted to. They wrote their own stories and drew their own stories, and they just kind of had a lot of... Uh, Artistic freedom, as it were. Ghost Manor number 17. Cool Pat Boyette cover. Or Sun Ho Kim, Ghost Manor number 8. Another nice high grade copy. Yeah, this is kind of an oddity. Uh, this came out like in the early 80s. I guess when Charlton was kind of on the decline. Uh, you have Charlton Bullseye, number one. You have brand new for that time, uh, Question and uh, Blue Beetle. So actually, they're both in the same story. I'm not sure who the artist is. Uh, Reed, and I think Bob McLeod did the inks. So whoever Reed is. Ghostly Tales, 77. The guy mailed, uh, the ones that are in Mylar, the guy mailed them that way, so that's, that was pretty cool. Ghostly Haunts, number 30. That's Ditko, but it almost looks like a Doctor Strange cover. And I'm not sure who the artist is. Uh, it says maybe O'Connell or somebody. But uh, nice artwork. Ghostly Tales 158. One forty-five. And as I said before, uh, a lot of these later issues in the late seventies and early eighties are basically. They had uh, no new art or stories whatsoever. They're like all reprints. And I think they might have just uh, thrown new covers on them. Okay, here we have uh, Space War number twenty-eight. Many ghosts of Doctor Gray's number fifty-eight. Haunted number 13. I think I already had this one, but very cool cover. Love the colors on it. Uh, Baron Wolves, Heart of Library, more Haunted. Uh, number 38. Not really sure of this artist, but uh, really nice cover. And it's got a uh, it's got a store stamp on it from Zeno's Books, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ghostly Tales one sixty two. Ghostly Tales eighty one. I think that is a uh, apparel, yeah. That's another Jim Apparel cover. And another copy of Haunted 13. I think this was another freebie. Kind of got some water damage, so. There's several freebies in. 
Uh, Beyond the Grave, number two. I think I've probably got three or four copies of this one now. Okay, and this is a, a later it's a reprint, Midnight Tales number 12. And they had the uh, Modern Comics logo, still basically Charlton. Great Wayne Howard cover. I think he like, caught a lot of flack because his style was so much like Wally Woods. Okay, Scary Tales 39. I'm not sure what the uh, horror host's name is in these. The guy with the green cloak and the hat and all that. I'm not really sure. I think this is actually the f first one I can remember having him on there. Ghostly Tales 160. Oh look, another Steve Ditko cover. And another one, Ghostly Tales 111. Number 143. One sixty one with another uh, Wayne Howard cover. Kind of obvious to see uh, the Wally Wood influence there. And yet another copy of Ghostly Tales one sixty two. Not sure about the artist on the cover, but I really like it. Uh, Haunted number 68. Haunted number 66. With a cover by my beloved Mr. Tom Sutton. And last but not least, Ghost Manor number 20 with another uh, San Ho Kim cover. Alright guys, I really appreciate uh, you sticking around. Uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of Charlton Comics. I mean, they're just, uh, and the company did everything. You know, they weren't real big on superheroes. Uh, but they had a lot of other cool stuff, and especially the horror stuff that I, sh I just showed. And... Uh, they're just they're just fun to read, you know. The the stories are maybe anywhere from four to eight pages long, and you know you don't have to really invest yourself in you know if you just want to buy a copy of this one or a copy of that title or a copy of this title, you don't have to invest yourself in buying, you know, like a multi part, you know, saga or whatever. Uh, they're just fun reads. Great art, you know. A lot of the great artists that went to DC and Marvel got their start. Danny O'Neill, the writer, got his start. I think at that time he was using the uh, the name Sergius O'Shaughnessy. So anybody who wants to go back and uh, search that out and they see that in Charlton Comic, that's Denny O'Neill. All right, guys, like I say, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, any comments or questions? I'm not a Charlton expert, but uh, I think I'm getting close. So we'll see you next time. Onward and upward.